Hi guys, Miss O'Leary here. And Miss Smaller. Coming back to you this week with another really, really good short story. Um, we have some questions for you to do after and then a writing prompt. So we hope you really like it. The story is called, If I Were a Superhero. I really like this story because it kind of uses your imagination if you were a superhero. And we're also going to find out about what happens in the story about this person and maybe them being a superhero too. Sounds great. Hi, Scope readers. Kristen Lewis here. I'm going to read you my short story, If I Were a Superhero. Ready? Here we go. If I were a superhero, I wouldn't hide who I am by Kristen Lewis. If I were a superhero, I wouldn't wear shiny suits and silly masks. I'd wear jeans and my favorite hoodie and my hair in a ponytail. I don't understand when superheroes just let their long hair flow free. Doesn't it get in the way? My hair would be stuck to my face in five seconds, what with all the jumping and kicking and flying and sweating. If I were a superhero, I wouldn't have a scary name like Red Scorpion or Poison Oak either. I'd have a name that made people feel safe made them feel like they weren't alone. And I definitely wouldn't hide my identity. I'd tell the entire world who I was. I know there is that whole protecting your loved ones from supervillains thing, but I think that's hyped up drama for the movies. In truth, I don't think the world has many supervillains. I think most of the terrible stuff in the world is just regular people forgetting themselves. Like how yesterday, my dad and I were in line at the grocery store and when he went to pay, he fumbled with the money. He couldn't grasp the bills in his wallet because he has a degenerative disease that makes it hard for his fingers to bend and straighten sometimes. It's as if his fingers decide to go on strike. When it happens, he gets deeply frustrated. But he is also proud. I know not to help him. That only frustrates him more. So I stand there and watch, and I get this strange feeling in my gut as if I woke up to find that everyone in the world had vanished but me. Well, anyway, this woman in line behind us was apparently in some kind of rush. She only had a banana and a carton of chocolate ice cream, which was starting to sweat all over the conveyor belts. This woman began sighing loudly and muttering to herself about how people should hurry up or get out of the way. She pulled out her phone and started texting someone, her fingers jabbing at the screen, as if that would help convey just how irritated she was. The lady at the cash register gave my dad a sympathetic look and offered to help, but he said, no, I've got it. And he kept digging in his wallet with his gnarled fingers. Finally, the woman in line behind us exploded. Come on, she wailed. Some of us have lives to live. Lives to live. What a thing to say. If I were a superhero, I would use my superpowers to zap that woman into my dad's body. Then she could experience what it feels like to have your fingers go on strike. But I don't have superpowers. So I turned to her. Are you having an emergency? I asked, my voice shaking. Because if not, well, we're doing the best we can. I took a deep breath. I just wanted to say that. I added. The woman's face contorted into shock, as if she hadn't realized we could actually hear her. Then she got quiet. I don't know if she was still mad. I didn't look back to find out. Instead, I watched my dad as he finally handed the bills to the cashier. Have a nice day, the cashier said. As we walked out, I turned back to look at the woman. Our eyes met. She gave me a timid smile. And I thought, maybe I have superpowers after all. Well, I really like that story. I feel like there is so much that I could relate to in my own life. Um, Miss Muller, I want to know something because the dad, or I'm sorry, yeah, the dad was really frustrated when he couldn't get his money out because he has that disease where his fingers wouldn't work. Um, and he seemed to be, you know, not wanting help from his child. Were you ever in a situation like that where you were frustrated about something so much and you couldn't do it and you didn't want anyone to help you? 
Yes, actually this week, um, I'm going to tell you kind of a little gross story, everybody. So hold tight. <laughs> so this week I was scooping out my cat litter boxes. Um, I have two at my house and when I scoop them out, it is not always the most pleasant thing, of course, because that's where she goes to the bathroom. Um, and sometimes when I do it, I just get very frustrated because it's, it's gross. I'll be honest with you. It's very gross. Um, and also sometimes my cat tries to jump in the litter box while I'm, I'm scooping it. So that always doesn't really work out too. So, um, Nate offered to help me the other day, but I was just so angry and I didn't want any help. So I told him, nope, you, you do something else. I got the cat litter boxes. Um, <laughs> I felt bad cause I kind of blew up at him, but I was just, I was just very frustrated and yeah, it, it wasn't the most fun thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that definitely sounds like something I would be really frustrated with, too. Mm -hmm. This story also talks about um, being impatient and being in a hurry. Miss O'Leary, have you ever been in a hurry before? Oh, my goodness. I feel like sometimes I am running late and I am just totally in a hurry, whether it's to school um, to see my family or just to be somewhere that I told a friend I would be on time. And it's always seems like those are the days when I get stuck behind someone really slow or I get all the red lights. Um, especially when I get stuck behind someone really slow, sometimes I have to admit in my car, I'm kind of freaking out. Like, go, go, go. What are you doing? Why are you not turning? Why are you not driving fast? And then when I eventually get up to the person or they turn off and I see them and they're a really old person, oh my gosh, I feel so bad then for being angry because there's just like this little sweet old lady who is probably too old to be driving, but yeah, I actually then feel really bad. Mm -hmm. I do get impatient too sometimes. Unfortunately, like in our English class, when you guys don't get started on your do now right away, mm -hmm. um, I get a little impatient um, and I try to, you know, encourage you guys to get started on that. So that kind of makes me a little, little frustrated and angry. Sure. Um, Miss O'Leary, I saw a really cool quote in the story. If you want to go ahead and scroll down to that. Oh, yeah. Let's check it out. Let me try to find it. I think I know what you mean. Is it um, lives to live? Yes. Love that quote. So in this story, the woman behind them in line, she screamed. She said, some of us has, have lives to live. I think that's super, super rude. What do you think, Miss O'Leary? I do agree with you. Um, I mean, first of all, who really yells at people in a line? Um, and number two, I think that she needs to be, I don't know, I, I just think she should be more considerate of other people. Um, plus, I don't really know what she's referring to, but I'm assuming that, you know, she has this, like, great thing that she needs to do, and she has to go out, get her ice cream, and do whatever she's doing. But in reality, I feel like the dad is really going through something. and you know, if she could just put herself in his shoes and realize maybe this ice cream is not really that important compared to what this man is facing. Is that what kind of what you were thinking? Yes, I agree. And I like that last part that you said that she, her ice cream is really not that important in the grand scheme of things. So I think that woman needs to check her priorities and see what is actually important. Is it being a good person and being patient in line? Or is your priority getting your one banana and chocolate ice cream? Yeah, I totally agree. Okay, guys, now we're going to answer some questions about the story if I were a superhero. So let's take a look at number one. What is the narrator's internal conflict? Now, remember when we learned this in the beginning of the year, Internal conflict means a struggle that takes place within a character's mind. So we put a little hint here for you guys. The narrator is the child. So what is the child's internal conflict? What is going on inside their mind? Go ahead and try to answer this question.
If you are not finished with this question, please pause the video, finish typing out your answer, and then join us when you're finished. Number two, what is the narrator's external conflict? External conflict means a struggle between a character and someone or something else. So once again, if the narrator is the child in the story, what is the child's external conflict? If you're not finished with this question, once again, please pause the video, finish typing out your answer, and then join us when you're finished. Number three, what three words would you use to describe the narrator? Please pause the video if you're not finished and finish typing your answer. Once you're finished, please join us again. For number four, we want you guys to look at this quote from the story. So I turned to her. Are you having an emergency? I asked, my voice shaking. Because if not, well, we are doing the best we can. I took a deep breath. I just wanted to say that, I added. What would you have said to the woman if you were in line at the grocery store? Please pause the video and finish typing your answer if you are not done with this question. Once you're done, please join us again. For number five, we want you guys to look at this quote from the story. As we walked out, I turned back to look at the woman. Our eyes met. She gave me a timid smile, and I thought maybe I have superpowers after all. What do you think the woman was thinking now? Okay, that was the last question. So if you are not done with any of the questions, please pause the video, go back to the ones that you did not finish yet, and go ahead and complete those. When you're done, go ahead and come back and join us. Now that you have listened to If I Were a Superhero, it is your turn to create your own superhero. So don't forget, this has to be at least five sentences. Um, we really need you to make sure that you are using punctuation, like periods and exclamation points. Everything that you type should not just be one long run-on sentence. Okay, I'm going to read the prompt, but I just want you to know that 
These are just suggestions for you. You can certainly write more. Um, you can answer more questions. You can come up with your own questions that I have here to answer. But these are just suggestions for you um, to kind of get your mind going. And I know that this would be a great prompt for all of you because you're so creative. And I know that most of you know a lot about superheroes. So here we go. I'm going to start with the word what just right here. What would your superhero look like and how would your superhero act? What would your superpower be? What internal conflict, which is a struggle that takes place within your own mind, and um, what external conflict, which is a struggle that takes um, place between you and someone else, would your invented superhero face? Then write a short story about your superhero stopping a bank robbery. Ooh, I think that's, I am really excited. I think that's a great prompt. I can't wait to read what you write. I know. I'm so excited to see what kind of superheroes you guys come up with. Good luck and do your super very best. Yes. And please come to office hours because we miss your faces and we would love to help you. I hope you have a great week and I hope that you celebrated your moms or your grandmas or your aunts or whoever is in your family that you love and takes care of you. I hope that you are really extra kind to them this past weekend.